It feels like Google is preparing a surprise for us and is going to launch one day a suite of AI tools like imagery, video, language models, functions around them, all in one suite. That's what it feels like to me. I recently tried the Notebook LM tool that they've got. Honestly, it has a feature that is better than some of the other language models out there. In this video, I'll show you how to use Notebook LM and how you can create new content from your existing content and written material. And I'll compare it to ChatGPT and Claude projects to see which one you'd prefer to use. I was impressed at how well it was able to capture a lot of information and present it in an easy to digest way. So to start with, go to notebooklm.google.com and you get this interface where you've got your projects here, different projects. So you can create new project by clicking create new. You, of course, you've got your settings. And if you're a Google account holder, then it's easy to just log in using your Google account and it's free to use, which is amazing. So if you create a new one, you'll create, a, you'll get um, an interface like this one. But let, let me go into an existing conversation, so to speak, or project, workspace, whatever you want to call it. In the middle, your chat window. Start typing is where you would prompt. You can ask it questions. On the left is your sources of data, as it's written there. Sources, you can minimize it once you don't need it anymore. On the right is the ability to create what they call studio and create an audio on the basis of your source material. By clicking add source here, you have the ability to collect documents from your Google Docs, from your Google Slides, so it can connect to your Google Drive, basically. And if you're a Google account holder, it's easy to just link them up. You can also have it look at a website. You can have it look at YouTube videos and collect the transcripts from that, get the information from that, which is impressive. You can also upload text files and imagery and other kind of information, PDFs, for example. And in the middle here, you can start engaging in a conversation on the basis of the sources. You can also select and deselect which sources to include in your current conversation. So you can imagine having a whole list of source material here and switching in and out between them or all of them and be able to engage the AI specifically for whatever sources you want it to look at for that particular prompt. So in this case, I added two marketing reports, so one report from HubSpot and one article written by a marketing guy called Neil Patel. And here it's giving me a summary of both these sources. In addition, I added a fake company profile that I created from a previous video I did. And it has a team structure and it has a company profile, a fake company that's in the print industry, its mission statement, its global presence, the product portfolio in a brief company description. And I could have a lot more marketing trends and, and reports. So I could write, what should Skyprint use from the articles from HubSpot and Neil Patel? Who are the main stakeholders from Skyprint to learn from what is written there? Now it looks at all the sources. It knows what the information is and will give me quite a good detailed response to determine what Skyprint technology should use from the provided articles. And it goes into details on based on uh, Neil Patel's article, AI and data driven decisions. Skyprint should leverage AI to analyze data for smarter decision making, such as optimal locations for expansion based on market data, even look, making me look at the sources within the article. It actually lists where he, what he writes about it. In each point, it shows me why it's giving that response. So I'm able to get a lot of information very quickly. And if I've got a lot of source material that I'm looking at, I can engage that material very, very quickly. It gives me also questions that I could ask. It generated its own questions, but of course I would prefer to use my own uh, brain for that. You can refresh the conversation, but you can also save it or copy and paste this information for later. There's somewhere offline that basically here I can put sources of conversations, transcripts, articles, my own data, and cross-reference each other and engage all of that through this interface. Now, in addition, I can generate a podcast. So I can summarize all this source material here on the right through the studio. Here, there's already an audio you know, if I press hey, everyone. Welcome back for another deep dive. You know, today we're looking ahead to the future, marketing in 2025 to be exact. And we're really going to focus on how this impacts all of us as marketing professionals. And joining me to help unpack all of this is a true expert in navigating the ever-changing marketing world. Welcome. 
Thanks for having me. It's definitely an exciting time to be in marketing. So much is changing so quickly, but that's what makes it so interesting, right? Absolutely. So it's created a conversation between two people uh, that basically describes and explains what's in the source material. And here it did it in this 16 minute conversation, right? And you can download that and save it for later. You can also customize it. You can give it specific information. You can say, this is a conversation about two people discussing a specific aspect of whatever material you've got. So in this case, if it's about marketing and marketing trends, you can say, I would like it to focus on the trends of change in the social media world. And they'll talk only about that. And this is the way you can constrain it. So you just click generate, it takes a few minutes to create that audio. And you can see here, it's starting to think. What it's doing now is computing that so-called conversation, what it is, is not really a conversation. It's the AI talking to itself in two different voices. You cannot give it instructions as if it's two AI talking to each other. It's not. It's, it's, it's the same AI talking to itself in two different voices and generating a simulation of a conversation. So you cannot tell it, okay, I want the woman to be this person, I want the man to be that person so that they interact. But what you can do is you can ask it to talk to a specific type of audience for younger audiences or more professional audiences. You can push it to a certain kind of style, certain kind of level of content. You commute to work through, you know, but you drive to and fro from work and you're stuck in traffic for 30 minutes a day and you want to just listen to information and kind of keep working in, inside the car. You can take articles, condense them down into this 15, 16, 20 minute conversation, download it onto your phone and then play it in the car and kind of engage all these articles you wanted to read during the day, but just didn't have time. You can do that here by just clicking generate. You can create frequently asked questions. You can create a study guide. You can create a briefing doc. So it can actually create a document that's a brief executive summary, maybe. As you can see here, it's created a kind of a summary of all the source material and how it ties together. So here it actually picked up on Skyprint Technologies, this fake company, and connected it to all that source from Neil Patel and HubSpot and how it relates to everything. And I didn't even prompt it for that. It just did it. And if I created a study guide, it'll give me a study guide. FAQ, it'll actually create questions and answers, questions and answers. So good for, I don't know, if you're studying a subject, if you're in university and you've got a lot of source material that you want to test yourself on, it can generate it for you. So a very handy tool. And if you compare it to ChatGPT's projects, let's go into a project, into my YouTube helper. So here I've got my instructions, which is similar to in Notebook LM, in sources potentially give a prompt here. Let it read a prompt where I say, this is a prompt and you are personal assistant or you are a marketing expert. And I could give it instructions potentially. I have a feeling that would work. I haven't tested that, but I think that could work. But here, I've got all my conversations. Oops, go back. I've got all my conversations here from the projects. These conversations don't know anything about each other and they cannot access each other. The only way I can access the information is in the project files. So this is uh, the same as in the source material in Notebook LM. So you treat it in the same way. The instructions can access the data, the project files, and then I can chat with the source materials. But what I cannot do, of course, is create that dialogue. And here it's ready. This time we made it in 16 minutes. So basically the left and the middle section is essentially like a chat GPT or Claude project. And here I'm getting it for free. They don't really tell you which language model they're using. Really impressive tool. If you're a Google account holder, I'd be using this if you need to access and, and deal with a lot of articles, a lot of data. As all Always, I say be careful of what you add in as a source because you're sharing it online. So if you've got a sensitive material, information about individuals that you don't want to share, don't load it up here. Just be aware of what you're placing in as a source because essentially you're uploading it into the cloud. Google and all these big companies are training on that material. If you feel like you don't want to share that information with the outside world, don't. So it's a good tool and being able to condense information through audio method is really useful, I think. And they have this interactive mode, which I haven't tested it before. Let's have a look. Hello. Hey, our listener wants to join in. What's up? Hi there. I was, I had a question. If I have a small business of three people, a very small business, what would be my only, I mean, if there was one thing I can, uh, I should focus on, 
That's a fantastic question. Yeah, it really cuts to the heart of what's actionable for you right now. Okay, so if I had to pick just one thing from these reports, it would be focusing on zero-party data collection through interactive content. That's a smart choice. Let me explain why. Yeah, so you know, Neil Patel emphasizes gathering data directly from your audience. Think of it as using polls, quizzes, anything that gets your customers to volunteer information. It's all about creating simple, engaging ways to learn about what your customers want. And that really ties into what both reports are saying about personalization. But what exactly? Not a win-win because you get value into relevance and your customers feel heard and engaged. Uh, yep. Go on. You said about focusing on um, interactive and, and marketing with my audience as the one thing that I should focus on in a small business of three or four people. What methods can I use? So as you can see, it's got <laughs> some issues in terms of stability. That's why it's in beta stage. You can see what they're building towards here. They're um, able to create this kind of summary, this kind of conversation with the AI around content, around written material, reports, articles, you name it. It's crazy what it's going to be like in a year or two, you can imagine, and beyond. Real-time, direct interaction with these AI tools. Something to look forward to. <laughs> so when I heard about Notebook LM and saw some demos of what it can do, I thought, really nice. But since I was using ChatGPT a lot, I'm a paying ChatGPT user. It does really good work for me. I didn't really see if the benefit of moving into another platform for my work use. Seeing what Google's up to and how they're developing all these different tools, including the Google AI Studio, which I have a video about that. If you're a Google account holder and you don't want to pay for to its competitors for new tools, then this is a really viable option to use the interface for Gemini, or you can use Notebook LM, you can go to Google AI Studio and use Gemini there as well. Google is cooking up an AI suite, a kind of a studio where you get access to all their AI tools. It, that's what it feels like they're up to. Right now, Gemini is free to use, or at least Notebook LM and Google AI Studio, which is impressive. And if you're a Google account holder, I would recommend using it as much as you can. So I hope this video helped you. If it did, click the like button. And for more AI tips and tricks, do support my channel by subscribing. If you want to see a Google tool that will change tutorials forever, click on this link here. And if you want to listen to 16-minute podcasts created from two hours of my YouTube content made by Notebook LM, then click on this link here.